Uh, we spent time talking about your life before conversion, uh, what you thought of some of the preaching and the sermons. I won't make you say it yet. I think you're going to read it. Um, he called us boring is what he did. He called preaching boring. He called church boring. Uh, and he talked about his outlook on life. And through the process with Sue there, we begin to listen and hear what his life was like before and what his life is like now. And so I have asked Lucas to prepare a uh, full testimony. So he's going to read that. And I fully affirm that he is a converted young man by God's grace at just about 13. This process has been going on for about four years as he assesses his own life and his sin and what it means to really be a Christian in today's world. No playing around, but being a true follower of Christ. So Lucas, why don't you step right up here? There's the mic right there. You go ahead and read and then we'll get to it, buddy. Okay, so this is what I wrote. When I was little, <clears throat> everything was in the world was good. I had no worries or problems. I went to church every Sunday. I was born and I grew up in a Christian household. I thought I was saved already, but I never knew what real salvation was. I always asked if I was really saved. I said this every day to my mom, and she always said back the same thing. Are you? And it was in a loving way. Originally, I felt like what the pastors were saying was the most boring thing ever. But eventually, when I got older, I started caring them for what they were. Something clicked, and I later that night talked to my mom, and she told me about repentance. I prayed with her to give my life to Jesus. But later that night, I did it again by myself alone, and I told God I was sorry for every sin I ever committed and that I wanted to give my life to him. I looked into it, and I learned that the gospel meant good news, that the four of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, were God's words to show Christians how to live. I know Jesus is part of the Trinity and God's only Son, who was sent down to earth to save us. He was sinless and perfect in every way. He died for us so we didn't have to pay the price for our sins. I felt convicted to help my church. I loved holding the door open and saying welcome. I used to feel like I had to go to church because my siblings and parents did. Now I want to go all the time because the Holy Spirit is in me and I love it. I like to share Jesus with my friends too. One of my friends does not believe in God and now I'm learning how to talk to him so he can know Jesus. Pastor Costi told me Jude 22 through 23 would really help. It says, and have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garments stained by the flesh. I know baptism does not save anyone, but I want to obey God. I want the old Luke gone and the new Luke to live for Jesus and Jesus alone. I want to close with the passage that really hit home with me. That passage is John 3:16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I am so thankful that God gave this gift to me. Well, Lucas, I affirm in front of our church family that not only what I've heard privately through your testimony and the evidence of your conversion, but here publicly today that you are a believer. I have heard your passion for the gospel for your two friends, the one who's a Muslim and the other one who's an atheist, the way that you're standing for the truth in your school and in your home. And we are really proud of you, buddy. So uh, I'm going to stop before I get a little teary eyed and we'll get to it. OK, so you face this way. You face your mom right there. OK. And Lucas, upon your confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. Well, a, a brief word to close would be if you have not been baptized, truly baptized as a true believer, uh, I would encourage you to come find one of us. I'm going to change. I'll be out there after. Kyle will be here. Pastor Dale, Pastor John as well. If you've been on the fence for a while, uh, listen, baptism doesn't save you, but it is an obedience issue. So that step awaits. We want to walk with you. We want to celebrate you and make sure that the rest of the church knows about you. So be baptized and be blessed. Go out and have a great week. Focus your eyes on Christ. Amen.